everyone. Thank you for joining us for our seventh session of our weekly webinar series. Today, we will be discussing the Knowledge Vault and its infrastructure with our speakers, Dr. Hardy Schlor and Andrei Stanescu. Hello, Hardy and Andrei, and welcome to today's session. Hello, I'm Hardy Schlor, and a big welcome to our seventh webinar. I hope you find it interesting and entertaining. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrei Stanescu. Happy to have you here. Uh, let's jump right in. So the main topic for, of today, of today's webinar, uh, is uh, the Knowledge Vault and infrastructure. So really happy to have Hardy here. He is the right guy to ask all the questions regarding this. So uh, really happy to begin. So Hardy, a lot of people in the audience already heard about the Knowledge Vault and they have a, like a basic understanding of the concept. But could you give them like a brief introduction of how you would define it? Well, yeah, knowledge is, of course, as you know, for everyone, something different. And um, in this particular case, I think it's, it's very important to, to understand that the knowledge world is going to be, as I always say, for every man, woman and child. That means a big stretch in information, in what is interesting to many, many, many people. No? And in order to understand that, one must also understand that there is different types of, of, of knowledge. No? Uh, the most stuff that people believe is knowledge is nothing but, as we say in science, Gaussian white noise. It's just, it's just a lot of noise in the system. And it doesn't add anything to what we, to what we really want to know. And when we go really, what is useful knowledge to us, because when we, when we say we're going to create a knowledge world and we say, well, we're going to build this amazing thing that has all of the human knowledge, eventually, all of the human knowledge in, in, in one place to, to, to access, wow, that's a really, really, really big ticket to fill. No? True, yeah. So people are going to say, come on, you can't do that. You know, not even Google could, could, could do that properly. Well, they... Maybe they couldn't do it because they were too greedy. They were taking too much stuff and, and not what is really, really relevant. See, the knowledge world is going to be something that holds relevant information. And there's really three ways to approach that. One is philosophical knowledge. Very important. The second is scientific knowledge. That's a very big ticket. That's a really, really big thing because that really includes everything that people began to understand from the first and earliest recordings of the Egyptians until yesterday's last published peer-reviewed science paper. True, yeah. And then we have the third thing, and that is event knowledge historical knowledge, what did happen and what happened after and so on. So there is these millions of chains of events that one came after the other that are all linking together and they create this huge long timeline that started somewhere at the Big Bang, now we go back to science, and that ends with the latest events that some newspaper published a minute ago. No? Yes. So these are, these are the three types of information that we are focusing. And within that, we have all kinds of ways to capture that. If you talk about philosophical knowledge, let's say we capture every book ever written. It's not so hard, by the way. Not so imagine, difficult. Yeah. Because nowadays, you know, we got digital libraries you know, the Gutenberg project, for example, which is something we are completely inhaling uh, into our system as just one of the building blocks, actually has, I believe, the, the, the five or six hundred thousand most important books ever written uh, in, in, in history. Imagine all the philosophical knowledge that exists in that. Huh? Um, then let's go to science, scientific knowledge. 
Well, we could actually go back to when universities really became relevant, mm -hmm. let's say around the 1700s. Uh, um, Isaac Newton, you know, and anything thereafter. Imagine we have every single peer-reviewed scientific paper in that knowledge world. This is very doable. This is not something that is not possible. Um, then think about all the things that we are measuring. Every time we measure a temperature in some town, every time that we determine the distance from one thing to another, every time anything gets measured, we can put it in the knowledge world. That is not a hard thing to do. Sure. And because things not getting measured once, and they get looked at once, but they get looked at again and again and again and again. I mean, when, when you go back to the 1940s and uh, look at a, a science paper out of medicine, how we treat cancer, to how we treat cancer in John Hopkins last week, I think there's a big difference. Clearly, yeah. The difference in how it evolved, that becomes historical knowledge. Mm -hmm. How the trajectory works, how things change, how they get redefined, what new streams of knowledge entering. See, when we, for example, had the quantum physics uh, 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 come about, our, our philosophical understanding about our life, of, about the universe, about everything, changed. Yeah. By, by a scientific uh, discovery or, or theory, uh, so to speak. So yes, we, we know very well in how to capture what. The important thing in the knowledge world is that it all lives together on all these different layers accessible to the knowledge world tools all across the sea, all across everywhere so that we can go from philosophy to science to history and we can build these sweet spots of mm -hmm. knowledge that incorporate all of these elements that we call knowledge. Now that is what the knowledge world will be and that is where everyone can come to and get facts. And there it's not so hard to make a difference between fake knowledge and real knowledge because we preserve the, 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 the sources. Uh, of course. And we, you know, when you have from the same source coming nothing but unconfirmed conspiracy theories and from another source constantly very confirmed high value uh, scientific information, which one do you trust? You choose. And we will not actually deprive you from the conspiracies, deprive you from what is nonsense. No, no, no. We will have it available to you in case you want to know nonsense. And in case you actually want to look at that for some specific uh, purposes. Who is writing nonsense? And how did it come about? And who connects to it? And who funded it? And so on and so forth, which is all right. easy to, 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 to um, do. No? So anyway, so th that's, that's where we begin with the whole idea the, the, the knowledge world and, and that we going to deliver and we have already started building it. Right. It's beautiful that it, you mentioned this a couple of times. It's beautiful that it's unbiased. You, you give power to the people like to choose their own sources. We don't uh, direct them to pick anything specific. It's their choice so that they can, they can actually access data from, from the knowledge world. And I think that's beautiful. You know, here is, here is something that is really important. Now, um, I, I, I mentioned this, um, uh, uh, Digital Dementia, this great uh, lecture the German professor gave um, not too long ago, um, where he actually proves by a study of about 300,000 that if you consume knowledge through just search engines or through just smartphone apps, you know, the, the certain type of yeah. smartphone apps, yeah, yeah. Um, social media, this kind of stuff, you actually become dumber. The, he, he actually proved that dementia 
is setting in or making a difference to your life five to seven years earlier than if you take a walk in the forest to reflect on things and and maybe find the knowledge within yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Yeah. This is really, really interesting because what we do with the knowledge world is that by giving this open, unbiased framework of all the philosophy, all the science, all the history, all the events, all of that, and let the user define what is it really that he is seeking inside the knowledge world. And we can talk about this when we talk about you know the search panels and all these things. Um, we actually involve the user in to define what the knowledge is that he's really wanting. Huh? And he is gonna have to say, yeah, I want something that is of lesser value, value or higher value. I want something that would please a certain um, political uh, idea or a certain even religious idea or a certain uh, belief system. Because belief systems are also elements of knowledge. No? I agree. Yeah. So, so, at least from the outside, it is very important to understand. For me, it's very important to know your belief system. No? Of course. Uh, if 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 I know you uh, uh, b b believe you know that um, uh, um, um, fish are representing God you know and 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 you sit every day uh, in in front of a, a fish pond and and pray to the fish you know that's kind of important for me to understand true you know? yeah because it sort of gives me some insight about you that I should be knowing. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of belief systems, I should have come up with a better example. Than I, that. I think it's but, fun. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, but it's stupid enough, you know. So, so um, it, it's very important to understand, you know, what people's belief systems are, but they also should be able to exercise on their belief systems. I am not the judge. The knowledge world is not the judge of what you are allowed to believe, of what you value as knowledge, I give you all. You choose. But you will see by the scoring of sources how they statistically do within the whole sea of all knowledge in the knowledge world, you know, which seems to be knowledge that is more successful and knowledge that ends up somewhere in a refuted pile of, of, of interesting but not sustainable ideas. Right. That's knowledge also. And we give you that knowledge in the knowledge world. True. Yeah. And again, I think it's, uh, I think it's beautiful. And I think the, the possibilities of actually using the knowledge vault are infinite. I think uh, it brings knowledge uh, to another level. But I was wondering, you were talking about streams of data and so on. I was wondering if you took into consideration all aspects in terms of scalability, of availability of the system. Maybe we can go into more depth so that the audience understands also the underlying hardware and collaborations that we have in this, in this scenario. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> obviously, there is a lot you can do in the cloud, but on the end of the day, you need to do some processing, some serious processing. And when I started with this whole project, it was absolutely clear to me that we will need minimum for the next 20 to 30 years a very, very solid partner in terms of, of hardware technology. Of course. Yeah. And of course, you know, 10 years ago, one would maybe have chosen other options. I did not. I chose Dell right from the beginning because I felt that Michael Dell is the kind of guy that really, really is going to succeed in the, in the, um, in the race for, for giving the most solid and most performant and most workable hardware infrastructure. I don't want to worry about hardware. When I think about the knowledge world, 
I got other things to worry about. I, I, I know I have a hardware partner and whatever he delivers to me is the best that can be. There isn't anything better I can have. Right. And knowing that and, and Dell assuring me that I will have that, that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Now we can move on to, 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 to other aspects. Um, now understand that anything that happened an hour ago, a week ago, a month ago, that's history. No? So I can, I can have you know, ver variable bandwidth of, of, of capturing history that I'm missing. That's, that's one thing. It's a completely separate problem. The, the one that is really important is now. Of course. Because you want to do in-stream analysis. Mm -hmm. That means stuff that just occurred has to be incorporated in a knowledge object you're just creating this moment. Mm -hmm. Well, the financial industry can, can, can vouch for that, you know. They are talking about, you know, low latency on the level of milliseconds. Well, they say, wow, if we have our server that crunches in New York, we're saving about 80 milliseconds versus if you have it over in New Jersey. So better we, we, we go closer to, to, to wherever, you know, the, 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 the information like 80 milliseconds. This is what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So obviously not, not, not all information is, is, that, is that critical to know that fast. Um, maybe the only other thing I can think of is um, uh, potential problems in a, in a nuclear reactor when it overcooks. No? Uh, we want to know that probably, yeah. and even there, I think seconds are still good enough. So I think the, the financial industry probably is, is the only thing that we know where we are really drilling down into milliseconds to, to, to understand. But, but, but the information that they didn't want to know is so small compared to everything. It's just prices and news that relates to, to the objects that they are pricing. Yeah. And, and, and some economic data, which, you know, gets frequently pushed out at a particular moment. That we can handle easily in the, in, in, in the knowledge world. And the knowledge world, although it will be a very, very powerful tool for the financial industry, the financial industry isn't the target of the knowledge world. Uh, yeah. uh, or or the, the knowledge world is, is, is there to do some much more important things. And when we when we talk about real time real time means different things let me give you one example sure um so there are these two doctors in stanford medical center and they're just having lunch and one just comes out of the research center and says finally we got it we have proof that this particular substance given to someone with that kind of disease will actually stop it within two weeks and without these and these side effects mm -hmm. that we had before. Boom, some very important medical knowledge. The colleague hears it. He actually deals exactly with that type of, of disease. Mm -hmm. When he walks back in to deal with patients, he has that knowledge in his head, he is applying at that moment. His colleague in Bangladesh hears about it 18 years later. We can't do that. We don't have time to do that. We need an environment where that particular piece of information, as soon as it becomes digitally available, and usually these things become available via academia. Sure. That thing must be immediately available in a medical database. Mm -hmm. And if it is not yet confirmed, then it must be, we learned that, it's unconfirmed, it still lacks clinical testing, it's still this, that. The, these are just standards in how you display stuff. And in, in, in earlier webinars, we often talked about 
how we build apps and so there's only four types of, of, of apps mm -hmm. no? because you you have either raw knowledge or you have a, 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 a quantitative qualitative and associative and then a combination of any of these yeah and this holds also true for all the, the, the knowledge so the 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 information about that is nothing other than a qualitative quantitative uh, 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 you know, uh, a piece of, of, of information mm -hmm. that in a qualitative, quantitative matrix in, in display matrix can be can be transmitted. No? Yeah. And that is why the, the, the knowledge vault is writing completely on C plus eight, because that is the one thing, the one tool, the one technology through which all of that information can be generalized and can be made, can be visualized to the same root tools and root uh, uh, technologies, uh, display technologies that are good for everything, including showing Mickey Mouse to a five year old child. <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, the possibilities are endless, and I think the project has not just a lot of potential, we've shown a lot of potential with it. Uh, and I think like this whole C plus eight technology in the e ecosystem definitely is dependent on the knowledge vault, but I think uh, everything makes sense. Uh, I hope also the audience got the main idea. Uh, so we talked about like the knowledge vault as an overview. We've talked about uh, the infrastructure and so on. I was wondering if you could just give the audience a couple of ideas of plans on the, I don't know, a couple of months regarding the knowledge vault. If you have something in mind, you don't have to be specific. Maybe if you have any ongoing projects that you that may be relevant for, for the audience, strictly regarding to the knowledge vault. Oh, very much so. Well, first of all, um, the obviously the knowledge vault is well in progress, and we are have begun to fill the the, the vault with a lot of let's call it um, seed knowledge. No? Because you got to start somewhere. No? You got to start with your first study, with your first piece of news, with whatever. No? Well, we got a lot more than just that in there now. Um, the knowledge world will actually live completely outside any kind of business environment. It will be uh, living in a UN sanctioned foundation, which we will uh, announce on the 17th of, of uh, January. Um, the, the, and that's already all uh, uh, arranged. Um, the, the knowledge world will then become a IGO, which is a, a uh, which, which is the short for intra-government organization. It has nothing to do with government, it's intra-governments, between governments, so it's usable by governments and everything below, all the way to, to, to private people. And uh, it will be in, in, in uh, 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 relation to the UN Sustainability Program. And then it, it's going to happen very quickly. By uh, March, we will open the knowledge world for raw information. By uh, probably June of, of 2022, we will have all the basic tools in place and we will probably then have integrated about 1200 universities that are working together with us in, within the UN Sustainability Program uh, to feed information into the uh, uh, knowledge world. And that will come from the Department of Philosophy, from the Department of Social Sciences, from the Department of uh, Science, uh, from various sciences, uh, departments of history, and all the, all the departments that you find in a, in a modern university. Now, the nice thing is that uh, all the big names are in these, these 12, this group of 1200 and they're all associated with the uh, sustainability program of the UN. And so we we looking forward to truly put online a, a definitive system that holds the human's knowledge 
from A to Z. And possibly we will not have all there on one day, but this is a, a continuously growing project. And I think that we will find that by by middle of next year, when we are going with full tool suits uh, to, to, to open it up to everybody, uh, using the, the Eden license system in order to, to access it, uh, we will find that probably 95% of things people want to know already will be answerable at that stage. Hardy, that was amazing news. I'm really happy to hear that the project has evolved so much since I, fe since I first uh, fully understood what it's all about. Uh, I guess on behalf of the audience, we thank you so much for your time here. It's much appreciated every single time. The, thank every, you. Every piece of knowledge you, you throw to the, to the world, I think it's, uh, it's inspirational. So uh, yeah, I think that was, that was it for today. Um, I hope you guys... Hmm? Maybe I would like to add one more thing. Yes, please. And yes. that is that um, uh, probably in December still, uh, I hope we get it done in early December, my new book will uh, come out, which is called Quantum Relations Applied. It's the follow-up book to the, the, uh, uh, um, uh, the Quantum Relations Principle, which was uh, published in 2016. I encourage you very much to, to obtain that book and, and, and read it, and it will make it very, very clear what the knowledge world is all about, how it works, and in fact, there's a whole chapter dedicated to the knowledge world. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, of course. Of course, it's your work. I think people should know about it. I think the whole audience is looking forward to that as well. So yeah, yet again, I'm really happy for the news. I'm really happy about how the, everything has evolved, like the whole project and so on. So congrats on that. I think uh, a big part of everything you've done so far is thanks to you. So um, yeah, guys, thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you guys so much for your insight. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live Q&A session. Thank you so much for uh, joining us in such great numbers. Today's uh, webinar um, participants are the most we've had so far. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Um, we'd like to begin with um, uh, several questions that the, the, the members will now um, who are now connecting will um, address. There are quite a few of them today. Um, in the meantime, um, we'd like to uh, thank everyone in our community and our uh, telegram groups and our social media channels for showing so much interest in, in uh, this project. Um, thank you, welcome. <laughs> um, so I think um, we can dive into the questions. I'm sure you are in, uh, impatient to get some answers. Um, we'd like, I think I'd like to begin with um, Mafte Augustin, if you... Okay, okay. Uh, that was uh, really short, I think. Yeah, it's quick. <laughs> it's really quick. Yeah, uh, so... Um, my question was, uh, have you taken into consideration sustainability when designing your project uh, or something like that, I think, because I uh, posted uh, like two times or something like that. But um, the reason I asked this question exactly is because I understood the concept of Eden and I'm sure that by creating this transparent ecosystem of knowledge, you will facilitate the evolution of this sector of sustainability. But um, my question was about uh, if the project uh, have a corporate governance plan behind it in terms of sustainability, and if will uh, this project affect the environment environment in any way? Hardy, the floor is yours. 
Well, I guess um, I'm not quite sure this is a trick question, but I appreciate it, uh, especially since we are um, the knowledge world, especially operates within the 17 goals of sustainability for the United Nations. Now, um, when you talk about uh, sustainability um, and whether we, we are operating with that in mind, um, you could mean two different things. One um, is the electricity that we are using in our machines uh, coming from sustainable sources. Well, uh, for the most part, I have, at least for the time being, not, not enough uh, 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 decision-making power to choose, you know, where, where I get my, my uh, um, where I get my, my uh, uh, electricity bought. Um, all I can do is just that I use as little as possible to come up with the best possible um, algorithms. And I can tell you this, uh, from what I, what I done from the design, uh, right from the beginning, we rely a lot less on, on, on heavy lifting, uh, with machine learning, but we are relying on a self-organizing data model, which is infinitely more efficient than than uh, uh, hard machine time and uh, heavy lifting through through heavy processing. So um, if that if that answers your question on one side, that's great. There is a deeper, more philosophic uh, 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 possibility of your question, and that is um, is is knowledge itself uh, serving sustainability. I think nothing serves sustainability more than knowledge, nothing. And what we, what we have done, especially since the, the, the rise of industrialization is we have made knowledge artificially hard to get, expensive, privileged. Um, we have, especially since the 1700s, we have uh, made knowledge um, a, a faculty of very expensive private universities um, where, you, where you need to pay a lot of money to, to become a member of, and so on. These are, are make that data expensive, to make it hard to get, uh, you have to pay a lot of, of, of license fees to, 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 to uh, get to it. I don't think that that is the best way to apply knowledge. So we hope that with the knowledge world, we can at least bring the cost per access, per question, down to an absolute minimum what must be charged. And that's the whole idea of Eden. Eden actually gives us the, the ability, we can buy some license keys, and then we go to the front end, we pick a application, we define what it is that we want to know, and the system will calculate the lowest price of data with the lowest price of machine uh, involvement with the uh, lowest licensing uh, fees and so on and give you then the answer based on that and charges you based on that so um, in, in 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 every case we are uh, working towards sustainability and have sustainability most of all in in our mind and who in the right mind could not have, uh, given given where this world is 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 moving currently? I hope, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mufti, that I uh, answered your 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 question uh, correctly.
Yes, yes. It's amazing what the project aims to achieve. I believe so much in the project that uh, I will support it within the limits of my uh, resources every time I, have, I will have this opportunity. And we have to think of the future as if it were taking place, uh, like uh, as I usually say, next week. Everything is evolving extremely fast and the Prisma Analytics project simply has a dedicated place in the global innovation puzzle. So thank you so much. It, it, the, the answer is really good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Sarah, you so much for your, <laughs> thank you so much for your question and also for your continued involvement and support in our project. We appreciate it very much. And Hardy, for your insightful answers as always. Um, we'd like to uh, go next to um, Hunter Halford, if you could um, unmute and ask your question, please. Hello, how's Hello. everybody doing? Hi, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> We're fine. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing really well. So um, first of all, sorry, really excited about the project. So my main question, I think it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to uh, answer, um, is as far as the data, you know, I'm a researcher myself in education here in the States, but as far as the data and knowledge that you guys are publishing, who's vetting that information as far as, uh, I mean, hopefully it's not just like Wikipedia where everybody can just publish, right? I mean, this is a huge project. So I want to know who's vetting that information. Um, and, and I think the research behind it and, um, you know, how do we know we're getting a quality project and we're publishing that quality research or quantitative, qualitative, whichever it is, um, who's vetting that information, so. Beautiful, uh, great question. Uh, don't know Wikipedia too much, although <laughs> they, 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 they now, they now uh, obviously, seeing that their project is going in a direction that they did not want it to. Um, there's a lot of, 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 of problems with, with editing there. Right. Um, it at least was a fantastic step that they took in, in, into the right direction. But now directly to your question. The beautiful thing is that on every one of our tools, you will be able to do source filtering. And more importantly, we are following sources and we are marking any kind of fake facts, fake news that can be filtered and can be found. We mark that through the sources. Over time, the sources then score a credibility score. And with that credibility score, you can then go and can say, I that come from the top 10% of credibility. So for example, if you have a scientific, a scientific question, you could say, I would like to have the answers coming from the top 25 universities in the world. Okay. or from the American Scientist, which is a brilliant science magazine, as you know, um, or from Die Welt or Die Zeit or Der Spiegel, um, if you are from Germany, for example, uh, or Europe. So uh, you, you can filter who you want, but even more importantly, you can say, give me the answer from the bottom end of of, of the score. Give me the, the lowest 10%, the lowest 15% what they are saying. Wow, it's very in, interesting because that is where the, the, the answers coming from, from all the, how should I uh, put that, all the, all the, all, all the lobbyists, you know, that, that, that moving you um, in a particular direction of thinking without any regards to facts and truths. And that's where the conspiracies are born. That's where all that stuff is. And since we have an iron rule that C plus eight is complete hands off from any programmer and from anyone to score anything, everything has to be out of scored, has to be out of filtered, has to be out of discovered. Facts have to be out of, to give you one example, 
um, we had this not too long ago. There was a, some some uh, environmental uh, 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 demonstrations in Munich, and one paper wrote um, all three and a half uh, um, uh, uh, citizens of Munich were on the streets to demonstrate uh, for the environment. Well. Sorry, there are only 1.6 million uh, citizens in Munich, and probably not even 10% of them were on the streets. Uh, it would be very unusual if by any demonstration that were ever taken place anywhere in the world, there would be more than 10% of their, of their immediate citizens within that area. So we already know straight away there is a fake fact. Now, sometimes these can be errors, they can slip through, uh, they could have meant 350,000 or they could have meant something different or the sentence were, were badly edited or what. These are statistical outliers. But once you statistically have a high score of, 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 of information that is outside of what is typically observed, then, then you, you open yourself obviously to, 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 to question. So um, these are not very simple things to implement, these kind of filters, but they have to be implemented on a very generalized system so that the, the system itself gains credibility by being, being not tampered with by any human. And, and that is the most important uh, element here. I hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, coming on. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate we, should, we appreciate you coming on. Um, I see that uh, Dimal Saputra has raised his hand. He would like to ask his question next. Um, please, you have you have the floor. You have to unmute, Dimas. Can you hear us? Um, I think he might have probably some issues with his microphone. Um, we'll go next to um, Ron Prentice. Please, you have the con. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi from uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, my question is, I forgot touch, touch your shoulder. Uh, how are you gonna prevent uh, your technology for, for, for being used for the purposes of evil? <laughs> it's, um, it's probably every, every second webinar that that question comes up. Um, I think it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, there is something there's, and there's something about what Everyone wants whether you are evil or whether you are good. No? Although it's sometimes not exactly uh, easy to tell what evil and what is good. But I made this example, and this is more a proverbial example. Please don't take it uh, uh, verbatim. But if I were given absolute all the knowledge there is, and I give it to God, and I give it to the devil. And presumably, both have all the knowledge there is. In the end, they would act on that knowledge in very similar ways, because one, one thing that is most important, and that is sustainability. So if you are within a system, you want the system to sustain because if it doesn't sustain, you don't sustain. And if sustainability, that means the continuation of your existence is the most important thing. And knowledge gets you there to know what it is that you want or that you need to decide or that you need to know in order to do the next correct step. That knowledge will guide you the same way whether you are evil or whether you are an angel. It doesn't matter. 
because sustainability is what matters. And so uh, it, is, it, is, it is very interesting to, to, to then understand that philosophically, knowledge doesn't have good or, 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 or evil. Knowledge has only one thing, and that is that it points you in the most sustainable direction. And that's a really, really good point, because if you are sustainable, then you don't want death, then you don't want poverty, then you don't want all the things that ends your environment. Uh, even if you are in war with your environment, you don't want your environment to go away, or you go away, you no longer exist. So I'm not worried about that knowledge is, is falling into the wrong hands. Uh, what I'm worried about is that it is not used enough. And hopefully we, we equalize that by everyone using it, whether you're good or evil, and hopefully arriving at the same place. And that is to make this planet a place really, really fun living and worth living in. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Back to you, Sarah. Hi, thank you for your question very much. Um, this is, is a, as, as you said, Hardy, it's one that has been addressed quite quite often about um, how we can make sure it's not used for good and evil. And I'm glad people are thinking about it. It's a good, it's a very good, good aspect to, to take into consideration. Moving on to our next um, question. Um, Adrian Verlan, please, if you could um, unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. So I will start the video just to be. OK, it's not working. I don't know why. Maybe because it's I'm not in the problem. browser session. OK, so hello, <laughs> uh, Professor Hardy, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, one of my questions uh, were already spoken by Hunter Halford, so uh, how the data will be collected, so I've gained my answer. And also I was uh, very curious about uh, how you will handle fake information, fake news. Uh, yeah, maybe this project will become, and I hope will become as big as Facebook or as project. And uh, I see that they are not fighting at all with uh, fake information and fake news. Uh, are there any plans for that, how to handle it? So, yeah, thank you for your question. Um, again, I am not worried about getting a lot of fake information. Uh, as long as that I can maintain the source which 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 you can be absolutely sure we do um, we will any piece of information that goes into our system will be painstakingly sourced and it will run also through various traps of of fake news testing of of uh, false facts testing and so on um, and when a source repeatedly appears, obviously it's easy to, to vet that source and to score that source and to understand how reliable that source is. So um, yeah, we, we, we don't mind getting uh, uh, fake facts, fake news, conspiracy, all of these things, especially when we know that they are. Because then that opens the, 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 the next question is, if, if somebody wants me to believe something that is clearly not true or not, not, not existing or whatever, then why does that source want me to do so? And that, that maybe can be understood by making some of the associative um, uh, um, Examination. So we 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 did a, a, a few a few years ago. We we tested a bunch of of papers that were published um, with regards to oil exploration north of the Arctic Circle. And um, so I don't want to to get involved whether this is good or bad to explore oil north of the Arctic Circle. But I can tell you this: following 
all the papers and who published them, who they were associated to, and who paid them gave you a crystal clear picture of what the vested interests were on certain things. And then when you are comparing factual statements, causations, with actual scientific information that comes from, from very reliable places, and you filter then out what, what was uh, acceptable and unacceptable information, or true and untrue information, then, then, then that exposed itself. The, the, the whole subject exposes itself by doing exactly that. And, and, and it does not take a person to sit there and tell us that this piece of information is true and this piece of information is untrue. Because then there will be immediately another person two minutes later, which will just say the opposite. And who do you believe? But if you have a completely generalized filtration system that deals with all of these problems in a completely unbiased and generalized way, then the system is telling you what this is telling you and what that is telling you and where this is originating and where that is originating. And you can very easily draw your own picture from that. That's the kind of systems we need, especially in a, in a world where there is full of, of radio hosts, of, of papers, of websites, where people giving opinions. And the most deadly and most dangerous thing in this world is to mistake opinion for facts to mistake opinion for knowledge. That we should never, ever do. That's really, truly dangerous. So our system addresses that very carefully by applying these completely generalized filters and these methodologies that do not involve any human hand in it to make these decisions in these determinations. I think this will be a fantastic step forward now to finally bring information to people that is at least in a statistical way trustable. And, and, and I think it, 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 will, it will be very helpful. Back to you, Sarah, thank you. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, is is the was the answer satisfactory <laughs> yes yes indeed i have a better picture now awesome awesome thank you very much for your for your interest um you. unfortunately we're um ending we're nearing the end of our uh, our session we have time for maybe two or th maximum three more questions um i'll take them in order of the people who've raised their their hand um zarin please go ahead Sure. Um, no. Thank you for all the information and presentation. I wanted to ask, uh, as this great project evolves, uh, it will create a knowledge of its own, different profiles, different projects, and people looking for more information. And um, how do you uh, plan to use uh, or add to the project this newly created uh, knowledge or resource uh, because of the knowledge world? Very good question. So one of the most important things is we will not use all of that information and keep it to ourselves. We will have a statistical website that will in real time tell all those the users what the trends are of people, what they're asking, what they want to know, what uh, kind of answers they're seeking, what kind of analysis they want with, without, without uh, obviously uh, uh, giving any, any information about the user itself, which we don't have and which we don't want to keep. 
but we will, for example, understand what the, the streams of, of, of interest are coming, let's say, between eight and nine in the morning from Asia, or what uh, the, the analysis uh, or the, the, the interest for analysis about, let's say, sport or medicine is uh, coming out of England, you know, um, on, on Friday nights. And these kind of things we will have uh, um, uh, opened up and we will create as many statistics and as many uh, um, pieces of information as possible to, to feed back to the people so they actually understand how the world changes, how the world breathes, how the world is, is engaging in issues, in questions, in analysis, in what is on their minds. And that also gives us a good idea what is not on their mind and what perhaps uh, should be on their mind and what maybe should be thought about. And that gives another excellent uh, opportunity for the system to respond and to point out things that are unfortunately not asked enough. I hope, Saren, that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. It sounds like it's living and breathing. <laughs> Indeed it is, indeed it is. <laughs> That's what C plus eight was designed from the beginning to, to fulfill all of these elements, all of these uh, filters, all of these uh, things. So we, we, we will have a, a statistical layer that observes the system constantly, every second and adjusts and, and, and reports and understands. And yeah, that, that is the knowledge that we need in the 21st century, if you want to be sustainable. Thank you, Sarah. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we would like to uh, see if Wu Huin, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that properly, I would like to address uh, their question now. You have the microphone. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is my first time doing the AMA on Zoom. And uh, thank you for choosing me to the uh, meeting today. Uh, so my question is, um, when I look at uh, your Twitter profile and I see that Aiden is a credible license key that delivers knowledge as a utility to every human everywhere. So um, I have a question is, um, the knowledge is the man-made and the knowledge is uh, developing on many subjects. And uh, each subject will depend on many factors like politics, culture, and also religions. So um, how do you know if the AI knowledge is right or wrong? Thank you. So first of all, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, by the way, I'm admiring your profile picture, which is quite interesting. Um, so to your, to your question, I am not a judge of religion. I'm not a judge of culture. In fact, I'm not a judge at all. I am simply giving you, when I'm saying I, I mean the knowledge world, the system, I simply give you what is the best there is that we have learned so far about something. Obviously, if there is a knowledge that you ask for on Monday afternoon and on Wednesday there is a great discovery, that knowledge changes. And we, we have to start somewhere to box in what is knowledge. I mean, we, 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 we can argue about that, you know? Um, I can tell you that um, um, some fortune teller will say, no, no, knowledge is what is in my crystal ball. And, um, and uh, uh, maybe uh, somebody in a monastery in, in Austria will say, no, 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 knowledge is what is written in the Bible. 
and uh, someone else, you know, that goes to um, MIT University and uh, works in uh, uh, the chemistry laboratory, uh, says, well, no, no, knowledge is what we are getting from, from uh, uh, our university. So, and then there is maybe uh, knowledge that comes from industry, or knowledge that comes from observation, knowledge that comes from hearsay. The important part is that you provide all of it and that you are provided within the context of source. Where did it come from? Who said it? When did they say it? In what instance did they say it? Was it a joke that they told? Or was it a, a uh, scientific paper that they published? There's a big difference in that. So by painstakingly maintain where information is coming from, we will know whether there is a layer of politics, a layer of culture, a layer of religion, a layer of belief systems, a, a, a layer of, of um, uh, uh, knowledge within the framework of our educational systems, uh, knowledge within the framework of, of trial and error, and so on. That is easy to establish. But what is important is that we have the ability to filter in and out these various components. See, the knowledge is created not by us. We only giving you the tools that you can create the knowledge relevant to you. And if you think that the only knowledge comes from a Buddhist monk or from the Dalai Lama, then you may filter out everything else and only read that. Or if you want to go by who publishes the fewest fake facts, then we give you the ability to, to, to filter that. Or you say, no, I only want information that comes from the top 100 universities or from the top 1,000 universities and only from their departments that are dealing with this or that, or only from sources of this professor or that professor or that publisher or this publisher or whatever. We will give you all of these abilities to, to, to uh, filter accordance to your belief system. Obviously, it will be, in, in, in my opinion at least, most safe to, especially when we go to knowledge that deals with science and with factual things, that we are using the sources from those institutions that are best dealing with facts and with science. Uh, good idea to ask about you know, how 3D printing works. And uh, we, we, we ask uh, um, um, a priest about you know, uh, what that is all about. Uh, he has other ideas. You know, he may know more about philosophy. And maybe we can ask him about philosophy. And so we, we need to be very conscientious which sources we are using for what answers. And in our system, you will have that ability to do that. And if you, for example, believe that the information that comes out of, let's say, American media is not suitable to you because you believe that perhaps um, Asian media is more adaptable to your taste, you can filter it that way. It's not a problem. You are the interplay of our system. You are the other component that actually only with you together knowledge is created. It is all there is to know, all there is to judge through statistics, all there is that is historic, 
And then all there is what you want to know within your ideas of what you believe or what you are uh, like to, to, to engage in. Um, I hope that that uh, answered your, your, your question uh, sufficiently. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, that, that's actually um, a question that we, we haven't received quite as often. Um, we appreciate your interest and thank you, Hardy, for your answers. Unfortunately, our time is up. Uh, I'm so sorry to um, those of you who haven't been able to put your questions here on Zoom. However, please post them in our social media channels, Telegram, uh, Facebook, and so on. We will get to them there. Um, and thank you again so much, so much for your interest and your participation. Have thank a you. great evening, everyone. Or a Thanks, good day, bye. depending where you are. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you for thank your Thank you, Hardy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.